befitting the capital of Scotland, Edinburgh Waverley is a major station in the very centre of the city, parallel to the famous Princes Street. We now board an Intercity 125, two-thirds into its long journey from London to Aberdeen. Just to the south of the famous bridge, we pass through Dalmany Station. Viewed from any angle, there could be few civil engineering structures in the world as awe-inspiring as the fourth bridge. It stands 361 feet above high tide, with a track level of 157 feet. The steel cantilever structure is over one and a half miles long and was opened by the Prince of Wales, the future King Edward VII, on the 4th of March, 1890. It had taken a total of seven years to construct, and during that time, no less than 57 men perished. The legacy of the 54,000 tons of steel used in its construction is rust, and the consequent maintenance of the structure is legendary. Work is usually underway somewhere on the bridge at any one time. The car ferries that used to cross the Firth continued operating up until 1964, when the fourth road bridge opened. Fifty miles to the north, across the county of Fife, lies the Firth of Tay. At two miles, 364 yards, the Tay Bridge is the longest railway bridge in Britain. The line is on a downward gradient as it heads towards Dundee. Alongside, the stubs of the original bridge still remain. Designed by Sir Thomas Booch, the spindly single-line structure was opened on the 1st of June, 1878. Just 18 months later, disaster struck. On the night of the 28th of December, 1879, the last train of the day was making its way across the bridge towards Dundee in a ferocious gale. As it entered the high girder section, designed to carry the line clear of the main shipping lanes, the bridge collapsed. The entire train, along with its 75 passengers and crew, plunged into the ice-cold waters of the Firth below. There were no survivors. Within months, however, the North British Railway had committed itself to building this replacement. The new double-track bridge was designed by W. H. Barlow and opened on the 20th of June, 1887. The Board of Trade Inquiry concluded that the original bridge had been badly designed, badly constructed and badly maintained. Sir Thomas Booch, who had been knighted by Queen Victoria for his work, died a tragic and broken man just 10 months later. Incredible as it may seem, the steam engine from that fateful train was actually salvaged and put back to work. It ran for another 40 years, the black humoured footplate crews nicknaming it the Diver. Dundee's principal station modernized in 1985, used to be called Dundee Tay Bridge to capitalize on its fast connection with the South. The intercity route from Dundee to Aberdeen is full of contrast and not in the slightest disappointing. We are now heading east alongside the Firth of Tay towards the former ferry port of Broughty Ferry.
Rotty Ferry Station, with its old signal box, perched high above the busy town centre level crossing. Now the line runs out into the open and crosses various golf courses, such as Carnusti, which only a few weeks earlier was the venue for the 1996 Scottish Open Golf Tournament. Just for a moment, imagine you are the driver. With the close proximity of the streets and houses added to the restricted view around the numerous bends, it's quite an unnerving experience to be flying along here at 90 miles an hour. Approaching Montrose, the line curves through such difficult terrain, it proved to be too expensive to double the track. The South Esk River is where Thomas Booch built his last viaduct, but ironically, it never saw a revenue-earning train. Following two days of intensive testing with heavy loads, the bridge was so badly distorted it had to be completely demolished. Fortunately for Thomas Booch, he hadn't lived to witness this final humiliation. Stonehaven is a nice example of one of the East Coast towns on the route. Naturally, the town takes its name from its truly picturesque harbour. The intercity route to Aberdeen features a number of pleasing coastal stretches alongside the North Sea. of the city of Aberdeen, known as the oil capital of the north, comes into view. The Intercity 125 has completed a journey of 523 miles from King's Cross in just under seven hours. 